Okay, we're we're rolling here. So we are live at Oregon's finest cannabis at their headquarters store near the Portland Convention Center, and we are here with Taylor Moore, along with United by Media reporter Sam Beagle. And Sam, you've got some fine questions for Taylor here. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, hey, this place is awesome. I have never been in a place like this before, truly. I mean, this is, you know, first time for everything, I guess. Um, I've, I've never felt so invited as far as customer services goes. You guys are just awesome in that respect. So, what kind of background do you need, uh, do the employees here need to have um, in order to work here? I mean, it's... I think that it's just that, like one of the biggest things that we would look for is, you know, the great customer service, the ability to create a connection with somebody mm -hmm. and kind of draw them in and be able to probe and ask questions and create a bond and all of within five minutes. And that takes a special someone. Oh, yeah. As far no, as knowledge definitely. goes, you know, we do want people to have the basic knowledge in the industry, but that could be just, you know, you have smoked when you were younger or you've been smoking for the past ten years and you mm -hmm. kind of can feel your body out and explain. Yeah. Yeah, euphoria from energy, from creativity, you know. Mm -hmm. um, however, knowledge can always be taught to people. Um, the way that people perform and how they react with other people when they come into the room can't necessarily be taught to someone. Right, like yeah, knowledge absolutely. Can. So yeah. we do look for those special people that can make those connections. I think that's the biggest thing. That makes a lot of sense. Um, <laughs> so marijuana is still illegal in most states uh, at this point. Do you think national legalization at some point down the road is ever going to be possible? Um, like at a federal level for recreational use? A, a federal level period, being it, be it medicinal, be it rec hopefully right. recreational. Right. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to go and take my, take, take my little pipe with me and, and go, you know, smoke them peace pipe here and in New York City and in Chicago and in Dallas and, you know, everywhere and everywhere in between. Right. So, yeah, no, do you, do you, do you see that happening? I do see in our future a reclassification of cannabis. Um, I don't know if in my lifetime I'll see a recreational cannabis happen federally, but I do think that, you know, as we move further with taxes and move further with um, testing and background in cannabis and knowledge in general, I think that the federal government will kind of catch on to the fact that, you know, maybe this should be reclassified. It is something that we can profit off of. It does help people, you know, and the fact that legalization pushes our industry forward as far as just simply learning about what it can do mm -hmm. is a huge part of it. And I think oh, yeah. that that's where they might consider reclassification at least down a notch to like a stage two. Yeah, well let's let's hope Jimmy Carter Fingers and toes. can, uh, you know, his, his little bit about, I smoked cannabis and now I'm cancer free. <laughs> well, something will click in the federal government. Right. <laughs> see, <laughs> you see know, some hope in there. You know, somebody, somebody his age doing that and I mean, he doesn't look like an over-smoker. No. Not at all. Um, yeah, not too much. You know, it, if it works for him, it, it should work for you know anybody walking down the street. But that's that's just my feeling on it. <laughs> um, first time customer comes in. Um, first of all, do you do you recommend or do you suggest for the first time and? How would you go? Honestly, how would you go about that? Because I mean, each each one of each one of the plants obviously has a different right. a different taste, a different smell, a different high, a different you know this, that, and the other thing. Correct. So, what would? Uh, um, for me, it's a little bit. There's a differentiation between the recreational and the medical community, and mm -hmm. so when it comes to rec, I always really ease people in. So I start off with you know like the warm greeting and just kind of maybe some talking just to warm them up to the store or what have right. you and in the midst of speaking with them I'll probe them and ask them questions about things they like to do or where they like to go or if they're from here or from wherever mm -hmm. 
and I can gather enough information to be able to place them at least somewhere in my flower wall or in a pre-roll or what have you. Mm -hmm. And then as I go over, you know, I collect more information. I'll make a couple recommendations here and there, you know, little low ones, let them use their nose and their eyes, and then they can make their first decision. Um, if that's their first time to the shop, my, I automatically expect them to be a little bit less experienced, so I let them know, like, this is a trial run. You know, you'll have fun with this, try this. Mm -hmm. You come back, if you don't like it, we'll find you something else that you're going to love. Yeah. Um, with the medical community, though, you can almost kind of start off making recommendations depending on the person. Again, you know, I probe as always, but um, they're a little bit more easygoing. They have a much bigger knowledge base of the industry. They've been going to other places or maybe even my other location. And, um, you know, so that knowing what they like just based upon them coming in and walking straight over to the edibles, mm -hmm. going over and being like, you know what, I love the cake balls. It's kind of like, you know, you just got to be sly. And it's all about the conversation. Okay. So what, what exactly is the feeling in a place like this um, on the THC pills versus the actual product itself? So, um, when in taking cannabis, there's a few things that go into um, how it's synthesized with the body. So when you're inhaling it, your lungs can only do so much for the synthesis of the cannabinoids and terpenoids. Um, when ingested, there's uh, many more factors as far as like if you've eaten, how much water you're drinking, what it's combined with, if it's an oil or if it's a glycerin base, um, what the consistency is, what uh, potency levels, you know, it all has, all goes into play there because you're actually, your body can fully synthesize essentially what you're intaking. Mm -hmm. um, as far as smoking the cannabis, it's definitely more of an instant spot treatment kind of, you know, hit to the face, whereas it does take a while for your body to absorb and digest a cannabis pill. Right. Um, and depending on milligramage, it's it's tough to say without knowing more specifics. You know, no, with, and that, uh, that comparing that, product to product, I'd say the edibles are a lot stronger, okay. and that they are they should be taken with more um, caution. Mm -hmm. Whereas smoking, you could take a big puff off of the joint that totally knocked you out within an hour, so you'd be okay. Right. You're not going to know what's going to happen necessarily once you eat that edible. True. Until about 45 minutes to an hour and a half later. Right. And then you're kind of stuck. So that's where it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, you got to play it real safe. And I always <laughs> let people know, you take baby steps if you're new to oh, the yeah. industry. Oh, yeah. No, totally, totally. You know, everybody's body reacts very differently to cannabis. So. Um, okay. Last question. Sorry. Dang it. <laughs> I know marijuana is being legalized in stages, at least here in Oregon. I don't much attention to any of the, uh, the other places where it's been legalized. <laughs> right. Um, are edibles going to be legalized as far as everybody going <laughs> everybody going to be able to get their hands on them at uh, some point? Over the age of 21, absolutely. Um, I do see edibles hitting our shelves Probably by, you know, I think that the latest deadline is the first of 2017, first day, um, January 1st. But you have edibles. Correct. So Oregon's finest, and I'm sorry for not clarifying earlier, but we are a medical dispensary that is permitted to sell flour up to seven grams, uh, clones up to four per year, and seeds to recreational customers over the age of 21 that come into the shop because they want to get higher or whatnot. Um, and then on the medical side, they are, have been able to purchase edibles since the program began. And so oh, we, okay. when they come okay. in, they are more gravitated towards like the oils that we have or the edibles or the drinks or the stuff that essentially is more off limits to you guys, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. they can venture in that direction. Right, right. Um, a bill was just actually signed by Ms. Brown. And so we're waiting for it to clear. Mm -hmm. um, the only stipulation on that bill is that for things to hit our shelves, that testing has to be solid. They have to figure out a way to be able to test potency um, and 
for it to be standardized across our board of testing. Well, that's that's going to kind of be rough with cloning and all. Right, and, <laughs> and then they do have the deadline, I believe, which is the first of the year. So mm -hmm. it's like they have, it could happen by beginning of summer, and it could possibly happen by the very end of the year. So you have, so it's any time between now and January 1 of 17? As from my understanding, yes. Okay. And yeah. then, um, is that the last phase? Would that be once once edibles are legalized for the recreational user? Not that recreational users aren't finding their own ways to use. Right. Or come up with things to use as edibles. Right. Um, is that? But is is getting the edibles to the recreational user the last step? In yeah. full, if you will, in fully legalizing marijuana in the state of Oregon. I want to say that I want to say yes. However, I don't know completely what they plan to do with things like just our extractions. So as far as dabbles I was mm -hmm, talking about, mm -hmm. not medibles. Right. Um, my idea and understanding would be that once testing has been standardized and it's solid that they will start to release products that are, you know, to regulation, and then that could include any type of concentrator extract. That would be my understanding. However, if they only release medibles, it is possible that things like the RCOs and the OCOs that are very high in potency that need to be medically, I'm curious if they will have more stipulations for those or if there'll be another, you know, array of testing procedures or what have you. That's still yet to be Determined. Okay, I, th I think that's good, guys. Um, but the one thing I, I think we might need here, and you kind of did it toward the end, maybe just give a give a little overview of the store, how long it's been around, what you guys specialize in, little one minute infomercial, if that's okay. Oh, okay. Um, well, Oregon's finest. We were founded in 2012. Um, we were over actually on this side of the river, but over up on Mississippi, so by the hospital for a little while um, as a medical. I believe we started possibly as a collective. Um, and then we were able to move ourselves into our Pearl District location, which is, you know, hustle and bustle of the big city. And um, still as a medical dispensary and providing to all, a lot of the medical people that live in the area. And then um, when REC hit, we were able to provide, you know, Oregon's finest cannabis to um, the rest of the state as well. That was over the age of 21. We could open our doors to, you know, all of you guys too. And um, as far as philosophy goes, we truly believe that um, the strain is only as good as the grower. We do like to sell our growers, per se. Um, usually, if you guys find a strain you like, the grower grows the strains he likes. You just got to find the right grower. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Good job. Thank you.